Welcome back to the Planet Girl Photoshop 301 series. If you are just stumbling across this on YouTube, that I will link up here and down below the 201 and the 101 series. This one's slightly more harder, so if you guys are wondering um, what on earth I'm talking about, go ahead and watch those first. Um, we're going to start off with a brand new US piece of paper, letter size, resolution 300. And then instead of background context being white, we're going to want it to be transparent. It just makes it easier in the long run. So we have a transparent piece of paper here. Now what we're going to do is make our own sticker kit today. So as you know, Erin um, Condren or any other planner has certain shapes um, and certain shape sizes. So if you're using, um, let's say, a Happy Planner or an Erin Condren plan Planner, you'll need to know the, the shapes of the square boxes that you're going to be using for that. So using this marquee tool, this um, shape rectangle tool, you'll want to, in the background color doesn't matter at this point, but you're going to want to pick fixed size. And um, as many of you know, then Erin Condren is 1.5 inches wide by 1.9 inches tall. And so that is exactly the size of a vertical Erin Condren box. Once you have those in there, go ahead and just click once on your background transparent paper and you've got a box. Now you can keep doing that by clicking making sure that that's highlighted and clicking this way. That's one way of making multiple boxes. Or you can come over here, right click, and you can duplicate layer that way as well. And then you'll just have to slide them over. Please keep in mind sometimes that printers have a white dialog box across, around the edges. When I print off mine, there's a default quarter inch around the edges. So um, I just want to stay clear of that with one of our boxes. And if you're wanting to use this um, as a base for using your Cricut or your Silhouette, you'll have to use those instructions with those machines um, and modify that, this tutorial for that. So this is just for hand cutting only. That's what we're going to be working with today. So I've got several boxes. I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more. Again, moving it to wherever I want. And obviously I can probably fit one more, in, but this is just a demo. I'm gonna go keep moving forward here. So let's do some headers for an Erin Condren. So of course we have our rectangle shape once again, fixed size, instead of your height being 1.9, you're gonna pick 0.25, which is a header box. Go ahead and click, and you can click, and you can click and then you can move them all at once and make sure that you've got your header boxes all squared away. I'm gonna go ahead and make my canvas so slightly larger for you guys to see what I'm doing. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is shapes. Obviously, um, we want something other than squares and rectangles. So if you wanted a circle for like a date cover, you're gonna pick this ellipse tool. To If you want a, an ellipse, tool, you, if you just go ahead and hold down your left clicker, it makes it whatever size you drag it to. But um, that is not a perfect circle and that would drive me crazy. So what you're going to do is hold down your shift key while you are dragging it larger and it will hold it to a fixed proportional shape. Again, um, this is where the duplicate button comes into play. So um, say you like this size circle you want to go ahead and duplicate that exact size circle because it's very difficult to drag and hold and have a, a duplicate circle of the same size. All right, let's go back to our shapes. We've got um, a fantastic built-in shape tool for Photoshop and it has all of these different shapes that you can use. You can use fruit or objects, symbols, banners, whatever works for you. You can go ahead and use those. I'm gonna go ahead and use shapes. Go ahead and pick this lovely heart. And again, using your shift key, you're going to hold it so it stays at its proper fixed and proportional sizes. There you go. Now a lot of you love scallops, including me, and I think it would be great if you, I taught you guys how to do a scallop. Instead of using this tool and making multiple circles and trying to put them in a straight row, I'm gonna show you how to do it super quick. So you're gonna use this brush tool over here, 
and then you're going to pick this down arrow and it doesn't matter which one you pick I would just stay away from the ones that have those feathered edges you want something with a nice sturdy edge size does not matter which is what this number is so I'm going to pick this 19 and we're going to click off it so you can see look at how tiny that is in comparison to my canvas size so we're just going to make that slightly larger probably whoa that's awful large let's go around 200 that seems like a great scallop size and we're going to this other thing called brush settings so we're going to click on our brush settings and you see the spacing i want you to watch over here as i move the spacing bar over what happens it spaces out the circles of the brush to be um, an appropriate distance apart so in my um, experience, I found that usually around 92 to 95 is what spacing I like to use for a scallop. We're going to close that box and we're ready to rock and roll. Go ahead and hold down your shift key. Click with your left click. Oh, that's right. We forgot to make a brand new layer of sandwich. That is um, something I forgot to do for you. Sorry about that. But um, it's important that sometimes we make mistakes so we can learn. So we need to make our own sandwich layer because if we add it to this shape layer here, um, it won't, the, when we use our masking tool, our scallop and our heart will be the same paper. So let's go ahead. We did the layer by using this tool up here. So now that we've got our settings all correct, our layer is highlighted. Go ahead and hold down your shift key. Click once. And then you want to hold down your shift key still and you're going to click again left click and it will make a straight line even though you don't have to have a straight line isn't that wonderful so now I have a bunch of circles connected but you're saying well that's not really a scallop hold on a second let's go up to this marquee tool and it's a makes a rectangle you're gonna go ahead and make your own rectangle and you see those marching ants around Go ahead and click your delete button on your keyboard or you can go up to edit and cut and it gets rid of half of the circles and now you have your own layer of scallop shapes. Obviously fill this entire paper with as many shapes as you want. Um, just keep in mind uh, your printer settings and um, all that good stuff. What we're going to do is make sure after you finish this, before we moved on to the next step, is save this file as a Photoshop file, a PSD file. That will make sure that you can access this anytime you want and um, insert new paper pictures anytime you want. All right, moving on. Good job. You guys have made it this far. Let's open some files and let's get the fun stuff started. Using my control key or my command key on my Mac, I'm going to select a whole bunch of fun pictures, prints, and die cuts from the January Mommy Lay Kit. And it's opening my, up in my photo bin. Yay, I've got them all open in my photo bin. The other thing I'm going to suggest doing is go ahead and make a, get a scrap piece of paper. Now that we've got this all organized and perfect the way we want it to, I want to get a, a scrap piece of paper. So you're just going to go ahead and click New, File, and again, US Paper, make sure the background is transparent. Okay, and here we have our scrap piece of paper. I'm going to go ahead and move that one up, up here, next to my sticker paper. All right. So let's say we want our scallop stripes to have this wonderful green blush paper. So you're wanting to drag it from here. You can drag this from your photo bin all the way up here, which we've done previously. And you're like, what? What's going on here with this green blush paper? So the idea behind masking is you're going to merge um, one thing into another. So I want this green blush to be in these scallops. So I'm going to make sure that it's on top of those scallops. So while this is highlighted, I want to make sure that my little pointer here is near the intersection between these two layers. I'm going to hold down your alternate key. And when you see that box and that arrow pop up, that's a good sign. You want to go ahead and left click 
and it puts those green blush dots in here. Now you're saying, well, what good does that do? Well, do you see this box around here? You can size this and move this however you want to make sure that that scallop has exactly what you want. So I'm gonna rotate this and modify it and move it however I want to this way, okay? That's one way of masking. Now the other way that I've learned how to fill things in is using this paint bucket tool. Now there's a thing you have to do before you use the paint bucket tool is make sure you have your, obviously you can use the paint bucket tool, you can use a solid, which would be like a color, but I'd like to use the patterns that Mommy Lay has to put inside these certain boxes here. So what you're gonna have to do before that is pull up this wonderful paper. I love this, it's beautiful. Let's use it as a sticker. And we're going to have to just pull it up, click edit, and you don't wanna define pattern. And it's going to pop up the name and the picture of what the pattern will look like. You're gonna click okay. Then you're gonna come back here to your sticker kit and every single one of these layers, if you can see this little square in the side, that means that it's kind of locked, like you can't really get anything into it. So using this paint bucket tool, you wanna to make sure that one of these boxes is unlocked. Let's pick this one right here, and we're going to click on the shape one, and then right click to simplify the layer. And as soon as I simplified, you see that box went away. So now we can use our paint bucket tool. So we're gonna pick paint bucket, and there's two choices here. You've got paint or pattern. And obviously you can see here that I have a whole bunch of Mommy Lay patterns here. Um, here's the Kawaii kit that I use, and here's this other one. This is how I use washi strips too. You can um, obviously crop that original picture to something smaller if you want a smaller, um, a larger pattern on your boxes. When I do boxes this way, I like to keep the pattern nice and big so you have the full effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that pattern, click off it, and I'm using my paint bucket tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and click it, and there you have it. I have filled in that wonderful box with the Mommy Lay pattern. Yay! All right, let's say we wanna fill this one, this one, and this one all in the same. So you're gonna go down to your photo bin. Let's use these blush stripes. Let's go ahead and drag this blush stripes up to our canvas here and it's kind of right in the middle, which is just fine, but obviously what we talked about earlier is you wanna make sure that, that, that file that you wanna put into a certain shape is on top, but you wanna put it in this shape, this shape, and this shape. Well, obviously you can repeat what we've done up here with the alternate key three times, or what you can do is highlight this one, this one, and this one using your shift key and then you're going to go ahead and right click again and it says merge shapes. You're going to put all of those shapes all together into one layer. Now I have this blush stripes with this boxes here. Again, using, make sure the blush stripes is highlighted. Click Alt, find by dragging this clicker down towards this intersection, find that box. Yay, I've got it now with those wonderful boxes. And you can obviously make your boxes however big with the stripe that you want. All right, that looks fantastic. And you can keep to go ahead and doing this with the other shapes that we have here. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward so you guys can just sit and enjoy and watch. All right, there you go. I've got all of my sticker kits um, organized here with all of the um, picture files that I have. And now we're going to talk about text. So remember how we made this extra junk piece of paper earlier? We're gonna be using that in this segment. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you two different types of using text. Um, the first one is, is I'm going to use this pattern paper. And I love 
the pattern and I want to make um, the the text be the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and go over to here to this text button and there's lots of choices here along with um, whatever size um, or type of font you want. I'm going to just use what I have here, this Myriad Light Pro. And I'm going to head and pick this horizontal mass tool. Then you're going to click wherever you want your text to be. I love this, this pink right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Let me make it slightly bigger so you guys can see what's going on. Don't freak out that the background is red. It's not going to be like that as the finished product. So I'm going to click where I want to and I'm going to type love. And I'm going to go ahead and make that slightly bolder so you can see the pattern all together. So all I did was click enter after I typed and you can see I've got a whole bunch of marching ants. Now watch, if you put your clicker inside that word and move it, you have this wonderful patterned text. You're going to go ahead and click that and put that onto your junk piece of paper just in case you wanted to resize it. It's so much easier to do it that way versus adding it to your sticker paper right away. So um, I like that size just the way it is. We're going to go back to our photo bin, pick our sticker paper, and this is where you can drag here to over here, and it makes its own layer. So now you can go ahead and put, how fun would that be if we could make this fit on the top of one of these EC boxes. Isn't that wonderful? Yay! We have text that is from Mommy Lay Patterns. Now obviously you can use text in a different way. You could just go ahead and type it here. We're going to type love again and it has this wonderful um, black color. Click OK and obviously we wanted to change the color of that. You can go ahead and color pick. Uh, maybe we want this wonderful new color right there you're going to click the color and it's going to give you that wonderful blue color that you've picked. And we went over that quickly in the last video. All right, now you've learned how to use a pattern for texting. Now the last thing we're gonna do is look at these die cuts and um, work with those. Say I love this Carpe Diem. I'm gonna go ahead and lasso the Carpe Diem It's got those marching ants. We're going to go back to our photo bin and we're going to drag it to whatever um, whatever you want your Carpe Diem color to be for the new one. So, oops, guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my select tool. So now I've got my select. I'm going to move it down to my pattern paper down here and you can see that tiny little ding down here. The Carpe Diem is right here. Say I want my Carpe Diem to be this wonderful yellow. You're going to want to size that to be here and so it fits on the yellow and then again using your mask tool you've got your um, you want to have your background on top but as you can see here it's got this little lock feature you want to go ahead and click your background right click and it's layer from background it's just releasing that layer so you can move it above your carpe diem go ahead and move it up alternate find the box and there you go. Now you have your Carpe Diem here. Now if you try to drag this to your sticker sheet it's not going to let you or you're going to be dragging that layer. So what you want to do is make sure that those two layers are locked together by merging them like we did earlier. Merge the layers and now you can move your Carpe Diem wherever you want including your new sticker sheet. There you go. And you can obviously, whoa, look what I did. <laughs> you want to make sure that nothing is selected. And if you do mess up, you can go ahead and do undo move and it'll move everything back to where you were. I've got my layer three highlighted here and I'm going to move it to whatever sticker I want. Now, obviously you can do this with whatever shape you want. Say you love 
this floral here, but you don't care for the color, and this is really not something that you can fill in, you can go ahead and push select. We're going to move it to our glitter paper down here. Again, we're going to unlock this background, move it above, mask, and now I have to merge the two. Oops. And we're going to move it down over here to our sticker paper. And don't forget you can always use this um, lighten. You can use overlay and it kind of gives the sparkly effect. love the way that looks glitter wise. A lot of this is just fiddling and making sure it's exactly the way you want it and that's the beauty of learning this from Photoshop. Thanks guys for stopping. I'm going to go ahead and link below the projects that I complete with using these wonderful stickers I've got. Thanks for joining me on this journey of Photoshop for Planner Girls. Feel free to leave any comments or questions below. I would be more than happy to answer them. Take care guys, bye.